Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp. Jesus, bearing his cross, went forth to suffer without the gate. The Christian's reasons for leaving the camp of the world's sin and religion is not because he loves to be singular, but because Jesus did so and the disciple must follow his master. Christ was not of the world. His life and his testimony were a constant protest against conformity with the world. Never was such overflowing affection for men as you find in him. But still, he was separate from sinners. In like manner, Christ's people must go forth unto him. They must take their position without the cab as witness bearers for truth. They must be prepared to tread the straight and narrow path. They must have bold, unflinching, lion-like hearts, loving Christ first and his truth next, and Christ and his truth beyond all the world. Jesus would have his people go forth without the camp for their own sanctification. You cannot grow in grace to any high degree while you are conformed to the world. The life of separation may be a path of sorrow, but it is the highway of safety. And though the separated life may cost you many pangs and make every day a battle, yet it is a happy life after all. No joy can excel that of the soldier of Christ. Jesus reveals himself so graciously and gives such sweet refreshment that the warrior feels more calm and peace in his daily strife than others in their hours of rest. The highway of holiness is the highway of communion. It is thus we shall hope to win the crown. If we are enabled by divine grace faithfully to follow Christ without the camp, the crown of glory will follow the cross of separation. A moment's shame will be well recompensed by eternal honor. A little while of witness bearing will see nothing when we are forever with the Lord. In the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Our Lord Jesus, by his death, did not purchase a right to be part of us only, but to the entire man. He contemplated in his passion the sanctification of us holy spirit, soul, and body, that in this triple kingdom he himself might reign supreme without a rival. It is the business of the newborn nature which God has given the regenerate to assert the rights of the Lord Jesus Christ. My soul, so far as thou art a child of God, thou must conquer all the rest of thyself, which yet remains unblessed. Thou must subdue all thy powers and passions to the silver scepter of Jesus' gracious reign. And thou must never be satisfied till he who is king by purchase becomes also king by gracious coronation and reigns in the supreme. Seeing then that sin has no right to any part of us, we go about a good and lawful warfare when we seek in the name of God to drive it out. O oh, my body, thou art a member of Christ. Shall I tolerate thy subjection to the prince of darkness? O oh, my soul, Christ has suffered for thy sins and redeemed thee with his most precious blood. Shall I suffer thy memory to become a storehouse of evil or thy passions to be firebrands of iniquity? Shall I surrender my judgment to be perverted by error, or my will to be led in fetters of iniquity? No, my soul, thou art Christ, and sin hath no right to thee. Be courageous concerning this, O Christian. Be not dispirited, as though your spiritual enemies could never be destroyed. You are able to overcome them, not in your own strength. The weakest of them would be too much for you in that. But you can and shall overcome them through the blood of the Lamb. Do not ask, How shall I dispossess them? For they are greater and mightier than I. But go to the strong for strength. Wait humbly upon God, and the mighty God of Jacob will surely come to the rescue, and you shall sing of victory through his grace.